I'm back now at Hemmick Beach. It's about half five in the morning. The sun is just about to rise behind you. And I think today we're gonna to get a really nice sunrise. So what I'm going to do is just go for a look, walk along this beach, see if I can find any nice vistas. It could be where the, the view from this headland is a lot nicer than it is on the beach. But I came for a quick walk down here the other evening and there was a lot of uh, hedgerows and vegetation all down here. So I couldn't get a good vantage point over to the beach. But I'm going to keep walking along. Basically there's a walk that goes along, along, all along the south coast of Cornwall and uh, so you can see a lot of the beach down there so i'm gonna go for a nice walk see what there is and just do a recce tonight and might get a nice photograph um if these clouds up there right up there if they go pink which i'm uh, optimistic about that we might get a nice photograph from this cliff looking down but uh it's just a lovely walk anyway Right behind me, that's the beach that I was on before. I do think it looks quite nice from here, but unfortunately it's all fenced off so you can't get really close to the edge of this cliff. Because I don't think they like people falling off into the sea. So they've kind of stopped that now. Which is a shame because it looks quite nice. But I suppose, as I keep saying, safety is important. But there's got to be some vantage points around here somewhere and there is a nice rock formation right at the top that I might go and wander up to because that might be nice at sunrise but if you go on these walks anyway it's good to get a recce when the light is perfect because you get to see what photos you could take because the other night I was just walking along and just couldn't see any opportunities straight away so I quickly walked back to get some photos on the beach because the light was perfect. But then I couldn't find a composition and then the light died. But this here actually looks quite good. Ooh. Have a look at that. We've got some nice stacks out into the sea. We've got these lovely cliffs on the side. We've got, I don't know what that peninsula is there. But right over in the distance, you've got Goon Hilly. You can see there's, um, there might be a little light over there. Um, that's like a radar station. Um, so that is actually rather nice. I could get this for sunrise because it wouldn't work with the sun behind it because I think it's too much contrast. But if the sun comes up over there, lighting that up, that might be, that might be worth it. So, yep. There's a composition. Actually, I might just take one. I'll just have a walk around here, see if I can find a better location without all the, the undergrowth in the foreground. And then I'll just take a quick shot, just as a, as a record, um, to see what it looks like. And then uh, I think I'll come back tomorrow for that one in the morning. Yeah, I like that one. I walked up and down this, this fence here, went on the other side, but there's a lot of vegetation over there, so I couldn't really see um, the foreground that I wanted. So I've come back down again, and I think I've found the shot that I'm going to go for in the morning. I'll just show you the back of the camera now to see um, what the test shot looks like. So that's roughly what it's going to look like, but the sun has set behind this, this hill here. There's a lot of clouds on the distance and this, the bright sky is qu giving quite a bit of contrast to these cliffs down here. Because there's no light on them at all, um, and the light's 
above it and behind it. I'm using a three-stop neutral density graduated filter to darken down the sky. However, in the morning, when the sun comes on from that direction, it should light up these hills and we should get a lot less contrast. And I think that will make a better photograph. I've found my composition now, um, which I'll take in the morning. All I need to do is set my alarm clock and not sleep through it. So I think I'll need to be up about four-ish around that time. Literally, the, I don't know if you can see the, the tree line over there, there's a few trees sticking up. That's where our campsite is. So it's about a 10 minute walk. Well, probably about a 15 minute walk, maybe a bit more or probably a three or four minute drive. So I'll probably drive just to get here quicker. Um, but the road here is absolutely terrible. It's just as wide as my car and the hedges scratch each side of the car as I'm driving down it. So if it's six inches smaller, it wouldn't touch the sides. But that's the thing with Cornwall. There's lots of very narrow lanes and things like that. And if you do meet someone, you've got to reverse a long way back. So I don't think I like coming down here in a big camper van or anything like that. So peaceful, just coming out in the evening, just for a nice walk along the cliffs. You've got the sound of the sea, the waves crashing on the rocks. You've got the, the grasshoppers and crickets. It really is lovely. So I've come back to the location that I did the other evening. Um, there's no clouds at all above us, but there's some lovely clouds in the background where I'm photographing, which is unusual for me, but that is absolutely brilliant. Um, there's pinking up of the sky around there. We're getting a few bits of pink reflections in the water and the rocks right at the top there, they're getting the first um, bit of light at the moment you can see a little bit of a glow on them so I've taken a quick photograph just to see um, what it's like in the pink hour or whatever it is pink 10 minutes I suppose and it looks really beautiful there's some nice um, detail in these cliffs and the shadows because it's not too contrasty yet but because the sun's coming from that direction hopefully it shouldn't get too contrasty when the the light hits these rocks and there's some shadowy areas but it just all depends on the angle that it comes up to because it's pretty much going to be parallel to these rocks. So what I'm going to do is do a panorama from the left going all the way to these cliffs down here. So in a few minutes I'm expecting the sun to come up, light up these cliffs and then I'll take the photograph. But it's such a lovely morning this morning I think I'm going to get a lovely photograph. And this might be the one that I've been after. The sun's just about to rise over in the east there behind you and you can see it's lighting at the background there but this is a brilliant you can just see the rim light on all of these bits here and there's that feel there that's getting this lovely color on it at the moment so within a few minutes probably one or two it's gonna be very quick as soon as it's slightly high enough all of this is just gonna light up with that lovely golden color and that is the time to take the photograph sunrise and sunsets you get some stunning colors you get these lovely oranges and pinks and that really does make a difference to the photograph so if you're beginning photography especially landscapes it is difficult to get up in the morning and it really is worth getting up you've just got such a beautiful scene all to yourself apart from the seals and the, the seagulls and things like that it's just great being up but you get the best of the light so when I started landscape photography, I really struggled doing mornings. I did a lot of sunsets and things like that because I'm not a morning person, but the color and the experience is so much better and it really is worth getting up for. So if you talk to any seasoned landscape photographer, this definitely is the best time of day. The light at the moment is absolutely perfect. We're getting some lovely light on these hills. And as I mentioned earlier, I wasn't expecting the light to be hitting these cliffs in the foreground here. So to get the right um, balance between the, the sky and the, and the cliffs, because there's some very white clouds at the top and I want to expose for those correctly so they don't burn out. But if I, but that would then leave these, these rocks in the foreground and be too dark and you wouldn't see any detail in the cliffs. 
so this is a two-stop neutral density graduated filter and this is a hard edge filter so what that does is the, the gradation between the top and the bottom is very hard so if I'd have the soft edge filter um, the gradation will be um, too much so when I'm panning round it will be too much into these cliffs and it will darken all the bits of, um, where the, the light is up there because the light is hitting these just the tops of these cliffs and it's quite narrow we really don't want to um, lose any of that by having a soft edge filter and having the filter over this lovely light so what I've done is it, I've got the camera in portrait I'm zooming out into the the distance there and I've got the each shot I've got the edge of the filter right on the horizon and when I come around here I'll start lifting the the filter up and start turning it a bit more so it keeps going up and up and up and I'll keep lifting it and turning it just so it follows the outline of these hills and because it's going to be a panorama and I'm doing them in portrait so when I stitch these together the the gradations on this graduated filter won't go into the the cliffs or block any of this beautiful light on the tops of these cliffs here I'm currently climbing up this hill um, west of Hemmick Beach because there's some lumpy things up here which I think might be interesting and by lumpy I think it might be a there's a rocks or something like that so I'm just gonna have a look up there there might be a nice viewpoint down to Hemmick Beach but I haven't been up here before so I don't know what it's going to be like but it's uh, the light now is absolutely gorgeous there's some amazing clouds and everything is just coming together today so I think the viewpoint up there should look really good well I hope so anyway because this has been quite a steep cliff that I've been walking up I've now climbed up to this top of this hill and right over in the distance there is Hemmick Beach and from up here it looks absolutely amazing. Um, you've got the lovely light is just hitting these fields, it's got short grass so it's nice orangey yellowy colour and we've got the lovely coast down there and Hemmick Beach does look amazing from up here. You can see all the rocks in the water, it's perfect. Um, I've taken a quick panorama of here but I think it looked better earlier on down the bottom because right behind Dodman Point up there it's it's very cloudy it's like a grey murky cloud and there's a lot of haze so it looks a bit murky really so I don't think that will be an amazing photograph but I might be able to cut some of that haze out with a dehaze slider in Lightroom just to get rid of the murkiness from it but it really is worth the walk up here it's absolutely stunning and over there somewhere is France, but it's very hazy so I can't see. I don't, I imagine you can see it on a really clear day, but not today. So this is really lovely up here. So the one disadvantage to, to walking up here is these cows down here. Uh, they're getting very friendly and especially Daisy down there. She's getting over friendly and keeps trying to kiss me. And she's got a really long tongue and slobbery so it's a bit gross yep you so uh, i've got to walk back through those so that'll be that'll be interesting they're all looking at me now see that's that's the biggest audience i've got on youtube so far hello Get off. <laughs> As you can see, these are the cows. Hello. They're so cute. <laughs> there. Oh, too much tongue. Oi. Don't eat my tongue.
que... ¡Uy! ¡Ugh! That's gross. Look at this. This was licking my foot. Have a look at this. Slapper. <laughs> Come on in. Hello. Oh, you want to scratch. Oh, you want to scratch. You want to scratch. Oh. Oh, you want to scratch. I think they like the salt on my shoes from when I was in the sea. Hello. Come on. Off. Get off. Come on, I want to go fast now. Excuse me. Excuse me. You speak cow. They won't let me out at the moment, so I need to ask them to move. Come on, then. move, 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 move. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> Gross, dude. It's okay. Look at that, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. I'm just going around. I'm going that way. Right, I'll leave these cows to it. So I'm off down to the bottom of Hammock Beach now. I think they're coming with me. So. Look, I'm sorry, you're going to have to stop here. I know you want to go on the beach. I know. But yeah, I have to leave them now. They want to come on the beach with me, but they won't get through the gate. So I'm going down to Hammock Beach now, take some photographs. And if you are approached by cows, like those ones there, I've lived in the country all my life, so it's not been a, an issue for me. But if you are scared of them, the last thing you want to do is run. Because when you turn your back to them, they will start following you. And if you run, they think it's a game and they'll chase you. Especially the young bullocks. So just keep an eye on them. They're all, even though I was walking away, just keep a, a look over your shoulder just to make sure they don't squish you. But most of the cows, especially on like public footpaths and things like that, are very docile. But uh, occasionally, I think last week somebody got crushed by a cow, so it does happen. So just be careful. So I really do hope you've enjoyed this video. 